The U.S. could default on $31.4 trillion in debt as soon as the 1st of June. That date has been uh, su suggested by the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and she announced that on Monday, giving Congress less than a month to strike a deal. U.S. President Joe Biden has called for a meeting with Republican Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy and other leaders to hash out an agreement on spending that avoids an unprecedented default. Democrats want to pass an increase to the debt ceiling and keep paying interest on U.S. bonds. That doesn't involve slashes to social spending that Republicans have proposed. The new date adds serious urgency to a problem that has been brewing since January when the Treasury Department started using stopgap measures to keep paying its obligations to creditors. President Joe Biden on Monday stressed the importance of protecting the credit worthiness of the country. The most important thing we have to do in that regard is to make sure the threat by the Speaker of the House to default on the national debt is off the table. For over 200 years, America has never, ever, ever failed to pay its debt. To put in the capital and colloquial terms, America is not a deadbeat nation. Well, let's get more on this now with Han Tan, who's an analyst at Exinity Group, and he joins us now from Abu Dhabi. Good to have you back with us, Han. We've heard a number of dates since January about when we might reach that debt limit date. Some have forecast as late as September, but now we've got this guidance from Janet Yellen that it could be as soon as the 1st of June. How are markets reacting to that? Yeah, um, there are some concerns, but overall, this appears to be a noisy sideshow more than anything else. Uh, for example, if you look at some of the pricing on Treasury bills, there are elevated fears for a June default, uh, but those fears appear to be peaking around the August period. But really, to be clear, we have been down this road many times before, uh, only for uh, the uh, both sides of the political aisle to reach a resolution. So we expect the same to happen again this summer, uh, though uh, probably without, uh, or though probably with some uh, distract, distracting wobbles in the weeks ahead. That's right. As you say, we have been down this road many times before. It seems that every time the U.S. is on the brink of a supposed default, uh, the politicians do come together and come up with some sort of a solution. So has that been factored in by traders and investors alike, that uh, they will avert uh, a default when it does come down to it? Yeah, if you look at stock markets, for example, U.S. stocks in particular, um, they're not or they're barely paying any attention to the, these uh, headline risks, right? Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, some segments of the bond markets are showing some of those fears. Uh, but, you know, make no mistake, if we do see a first ever default for the U.S., then uh, U.S. markets will uh, most certainly take the first hit. Uh, we could see... Uh, U.S. stocks uh, perhaps fall by double digits, um, perhaps the U.S. dollar sliding as well, and other traditional safe havens like gold or the Japanese yen or the Swiss franc, those get bid up. But again, that is, uh, to be clear, that is not our uh, base case scenario for this summer. Okay, Han Tan, great to get your thoughts as always. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now to other top business stories from around the world. The International Monetary Fund has raised its economic growth forecast for Asia-Pacific thanks to the reopening of China. GDP in the region is now forecast to expand 4.6% this year, 0.3 percentage points higher than its previous projection in October. The revision comes as the rest of the world braces for slower growth due to tightened monetary policy. Australia's central bank has unexpectedly hiked its cash rate by 25 basis points to 3.85%, indicating further hikes to come. The Australian dollar also strengthened, rising by 0.87% against the greenback. Recent data has shown that inflation in the island nation has declined, but officials say that the inflation rate of 7% was still too high. And Hollywood writers are going on strike for the first time in 15 years as the entertainment industry grapples with seismic changes after the rise of streaming services. The move could bring an immediate halt to the production of some of your favourite broadcast shows and streaming series. The 2007 strike lasted 100 days and cost the California economy more than $2 billion.